Hi, people of the world watching internet videos that pertain to automobiles. Welcome to this. Project Super Duty, 2005 Ford F-350 Super Duty, which used to be an old mine truck, which has been de-stroked and is now powered by a 5924 valve Cummins common rail diesel. So if you're new and you'd like to get caught up on this project, up above my head is a link to the last video where I repainted this truck a factory Ford color from 1985. Today's mission, to install a fast fuel system. And just like yours truly, it's made in USA. Probably not in the same method that, I'm not gonna get into that. Cut. Oh, it's a box in a box. Is it boxception? It is boxception. Technically tech data wise, it's gonna be under a Dodge Ram because that's where the engine came from. That is some solid tech data with legible pictures and clear instructions on how to do this. Might as well start back here since this is gonna be so easy. The fuel tank. I don't have to take a bet off. Yeah, it's a 20 year old Ford and this has been sitting out in the sun. You know these things are gonna be brittle. Soak these guys in a little bit of aerospace plastic protectant. Repair suction lines. Eh. That's a, oh, that's a lot of, that's a lot of installations. Oh, these are rubber. These little chunks of rubber smell like those top finder scratch and sniff things that you put on your windows of shitty apartment buildings in the 90s. Oh, these are nice. I don't remember what it is, but a couple weeks ago I was working on something that had that same exact smell too. It's very distinct. There. Oh, you know that one's gonna break. Nope, the Fords. This is probably something weird, like eight or nine mil. Downside of this being a former mine truck is no matter how many times I've washed it, there's still dirt that just comes up out of the woodwork. Oh, oh the exhaust! That fucking hurt. I was ripped my kneecap off. That's why I can't have nice things like knees. Stinky, stinky danger. I don't really want to mount it under here because once the transfer case and transmission and drive shaft are in here, nah. I'm not gonna say how long it took me to figure out where to mount this thing, but I figured it out. Can I sit on the pumpkin? <laughs> Nobody has ever said that one before. Yeah, that allows me to get two bolts in. Nah, I don't think the drive shaft will be anywhere near there. Do it back here, I'll get it further away from the drive shaft. Yeah. Adley, that's that's dumb. I'm not putting that top of a tire. I'm rapidly depleting my hardware inventory. I'm gonna be sad when this runs out. Got a rubber isolator. Oh yeah. It's out of the way of the drive shaft. Yep, I like that. Good. I like that. Pretty much the perfect spot. It's not impeding the drive line whatsoever. It's firmly mounted with two bolts instead of one. And also it's kind of an area where it's not gonna get hit off road just because of where the tires are in relation to it. We got plenty of area right here. I need the suck straw and the blow straw. This is gonna bother me if it's not symmetrical. I can't do it symmetrical, it's just not possible. And that is how I will make it look OEM, an unsymmetrical debacle-ry. I don't want that to break. I don't even know if those are real words and if that's a real sentence. Oh, I can hear all the dirt in it. I don't know if this one's gonna come out. Oh, it is. Look at that. Look at all the dirt in there. 20 year old sun baked plastic that was full of dirt and it still came apart. Seven eighths or 22 ish millimeter. Oh my god, that was so tight. Why am I an idiot? Is this the right drill bit for the job? No. Do I have the right drill bit for the job? No. Will it get the job done? Yes. Drill bits are dull. Any intelligent idiot can do a job correctly with the right tools, but Perfect. it takes a special breed of idiot to do the job correctly with the wrong tools. Hey. I don't have any more food for you. What? Are you saying thank you? I just gave the Roadrunner some little pieces of pepperoni and some cheese. Yeah, was that tasty? I don't have any more. I'm sorry. I wasn't feeding the wildlife. I'm the wildlife. That thing's smarter than I am. Now that these are deburred and pulled out. And yes, I did think about the sending unit float. This should not impede with its path. Although, that is... Perfect. I'm just loosely installing it first before I put Loctite on there. That should be pretty straight shot right there. 
I don't want to smush this thing since it's aluminium. Carefuling, carefuling, carefuling. That's probably good. Just like that. Facing that way. Red Loctite. Per the instructions, it says to use red Loctite. That right there. Pretty much like that. See? What? There's a hose in a hose. Hose section. Since this kit was designed originally for a Dodge, and this is not a Dodge, the sending unit is quite a bit different. So this is a little bit of, I'm just winging it and making it work. Almost on there. Make this my return. I think this is why they gave me lube. Well, I don't need the lube. I don't want to use my good metric tape measure, so I'm gonna use this one. Measure it in SAE. So, 5 eighths, 13 and 5 eighths. That's uh, 13 and 5 eighths everywhere. Will tape stick to diesel fuel? Yes, it will. Weird. Hello, it's the following day. I did something to the suck tube. If you notice the bottom of the pickup tube, it has these little teeth where it just barely reaches the bottom of the tank. Well, as you can see, I did something fairly similar to the end of the pickup tube. My theory is the reason why they did this is in case the event of a piece of trash went into your fuel tank and it got stuck on the bottom of the straw, well, it still allows for fuel to get past that, like if it was a piece of plastic or something that's stuck to it. Inevitably, someone's gonna ask in the comments below why I'm not using the factory stainless steel straws on the OEM sending unit. It gives me a little less than a half an inch. Perfect. And the reason is, have you ever tried to suck a boba through a normal size straw? It doesn't work. Well, this thing's gonna be sucking a whole lot of boba, so they can't use normal size straw. Now this guy can go back in. Now while this fuel system does have a return hose on the pump, I still do believe that I'm going to have to keep the return line coming from the engine to feed back into the tank for any unused fuel up there. It doesn't say to do this, but the truck is gonna be off-roading a lot, so. I'm actually using some gel-based Loctite. It's not really like gel, it's more like toothpaste grade. Although I wouldn't brush your teeth with this stuff unless you hate your mouth. This nipple. This mounting location might look a little strange, but please keep in mind this is gonna have a huge tray on top of it one day. How is this blue? I kind of actually like that a little bit. For those of you that don't know, a lot of Ford performance parts back in the day, like radiator hoses and stuff, were this exact same color, so it's kind of ironic. The most logical way to do this is to just replicate what the factory did with the stainless lines. I mean, I got a pretty good path right along the frame rail, like the factory lines, but I want to wrap this thing in a chafe protection. All right, so I officially only have enough to reach the engine. This is all the hose, and here's where it's got to go. I, I had like an extra foot, maybe. Eject. There you go. This is the last fitting in the kit, so presumably. This fuel line routing in the engine bay is likely going to change. The new fitting's got an O-ring, so this just needs to be loosely installed. It's not much. So the next part, I said I wasn't gonna do any more wiring after uh, taking a break on the RE21 for a video. It's just a harness, and there's no point in installing it anyway because the truck isn't even wired to run yet. Literally just a plug and play harness. It's not that complicated. So no point in doing this. Not like this thing's gonna run anytime soon. Food cake with the fuel line to the rescue. Buongiorno. Now I got some hose. Angel food cake to the rescue. Now some of you probably noticed at the beginning of the video that the pickup tube on this kit does not have a screen or a strainer on it like the factory one does. Water separator. A little bit of lube. And that's because this utilizes two filters, one to filter out water, and a second one to filter out stuff almost up to the diameter of a chicken nugget. Aside from putting some loom over this to protect it, uh, I like that. <gasps> this thing is so heavy. This is the other part of the video. I bought Charlie a bumper for his birthday. Now this thing right here is not sponsored, I bought it. It's an ARB bull bar bumper. This thing's sick. You're gonna go big. Don't go home. Or something. I don't know how that goes. Weird colored cardboard. I think it's because this thing's made in Australia. Maybe they have different cardboard trees. Oh, heavy. Thanks, because I didn't already know. I've always been infatuated with these bumpers. I just, they look so much better than all the other aftermarket ones out there. How the hell am I gonna pick this thing up to bolt it on myself? This is insane. 
Oh, it's a skinny boy. Box half. Hadware. What the hell is this thing? Okay. I don't know if this is going to be possible. Oh, man. Oh, geez. Are these hardwares? Oh, these are the bumper lights. Oh, that's sick. Are you serious? There are two types of people in this world. Those that organize their Legos before they assemble them and others that shove them up their nose. There, much better. Remove the bumper and two recovery hooks. All right. Well, that's kind of weird. You can see how this thing was manufactured. Just a big tube that was bent. What a stupid thing. Fit M12 cage nuts into slots. Free range caged nuts. I guess like that. Slide packer into the chassis slot. Why did you command me to do that? Okay, confusing, okay. Four millimeter thick washers. Wipe the dirt out of the hole first. Yeah, that was gross. That goes like that, I guess. These go like this. So far, this is turning out to be extremely satisfying to assemble. All right. So far, I got a metric tape measure. Metric tape measure. 953 millimeters. Centered. The answer to your question is 476.5. 476.5 should be the center of the Florida logo. Okay. Well, that was a juicy bug. Oh, it's already notched for it. That's interesting, okay. Drill through strap and bracket at the same, well. I mean, that's still perfect. Ah, paint. A little bit of paint marker. <laughs> I feel like this little tension strap was a little bit of a lazy design. I mean, it gets the job done, but eh. The next few steps are for a winch. Winches are expensive, and, uh, and this bumper was expensive enough as it is. I, I couldn't afford a winch, too. That's still a lot of money. Oh, the thing goes into the front. Nylon butt plugs. These go in here. There's a lot of stuff about this that feels like it's an OEM part from an actual car manufacturer. So I discard the hardware that comes with it. it. means that they don't actually make it. Someone else does. It doesn't appear that there's a gasket in there. I don't, I don't like that. I'm going to add a gasket. I don't need a lot. I just need a little bit. I added a little bit of gasket material. Oh, I got it. Okay. okay. One thing that's going to suck about this is to put the winch on you gotta take the bumper back off. It goes on from the rear. That's not gonna be fun. Wrap rubber extrusion around winch cover. I don't have a winch cover. Yeah, that was really loud. Okay, that's gonna tip. I, I gotta go ask the boys next door for some help. I don't like bothering them, but. So. God, when you told me bumper, I was not thinking this. Yeah. This quick little time lapse you're watching, me tightening all the hardware and adjusting the bumper actually took close to two and a half hours to film because I wanted it to be within a millimeter of accuracy. That is literally perfect. Absolutely dead center. This, this thing looks like it's ready for the apocalypse. I love it. I would have really sucked to forget to do the hose clamps and the oil cooler. That would have been a mess. I have to be sure I like this mounting location because now I gotta make it permanent. The gap is uniform distance wise from the fender. I left adequate spacing away from the grill. This guy right here is kind of a skid plate, but it's more of a protector for the oil cooler down here. Uh, I don't, 
I don't see how that's possible. I didn't put these clips in when I assembled the truck. Ouch. Mia, yeah, washer is a little small for the application. Solid. So this bar down here is removable. This guy right here, this whole assembly is removable. Honestly, it serves as another piece of protection for the radiator and the core support. So I'll leave it up to Charlie whether or not he wants to remove that. This step is permanent, so here goes nothing. Ouch, I can't do it. Ouch, that's loud. All right, whole time. Does it look like the bolts? Yep, those are the bolts. And then the pin bolt. Ouch. Yeah, that was a good shot, perfectly centered. The purpose of these two little bolts is simply to make sure you lock in your adjustments. So that way if you ever remove the bumper, it goes back together quick and easy without having to readjust. Perfect. These tow hooks flat out just need to be re-powder coated. And paint is not gonna hold up on these. <laughs> like I'm gonna be able to do anything with that hook. Now as far as the top goes, it came with a giant cover or a little cover that goes over the opening right here where you access the top of the winch. There's no point in putting either of those on because there is going to be a winch going on this thing before the truck's drivable. It's still not even drivable yet. I don't know about you, but I think that bumper right there is like the cherry on the top for this being Project Super UT. I mean, yeah, the wheels still need to be powder coated. It's got new tires at least. It still needs a resident fabric cobbler to complete the aluminum tray bed. Transmission needs to get installed, exhaust needs to get made, and the rest of the truck has to be wired up to the new engine. It needs its tired, worn out, original suspension replaced. Well, there's quite a bit of work left to do with this truck, but after all, I did buy the truck for a gift for Charlie so he'd have reliable mode of transportation. And I, I can't work on every vehicle in the world. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just only capable of doing so much. There's only so many hours in a day. And this is more important right now, which I will be getting back to work on and we'll be continuing with the wiring. I was blown away with the feedback I got from all of you on the last wiring video, the Celica, how many of you enjoyed that video and it showed with how many of you watched it. So I'll keep it up. You, you like it? You got another one coming, that's for sure probably one to two videos i think on the wiring and it'll be pretty much wrapped up and then once that's done and this thing fires up for the first time it's all coming out so i can paint that engine bay and make it look immaculate and uh, again thanks to the people at fast for sponsoring the fuel system for this truck i don't get a lot of sponsors on this channel as a lot of you know so it's nice when one comes through like that and uh thank you guys for watching i'll see you soon with another video bye